What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Knights of Horror Anthony, and I'm sitting down with Eddie Tainment talking about pros and cons of HHN, Orlando, and Hollywood. So, let's get right to it. I'm very jealous of your guys' event every every year <laughs> because you guys get both um, original properties and IP properties. And one of the things that us Hollywood guys out here are always jealous of is the fact that you guys get icons a lot. What I want to know from you, from your experiences as HHN, is how awesome is that to experience? Um, well, I gotta say, I'm a huge lover of the icon uh, era, and it's kind of died off. Um, they don't do it as often, but it was a great experience, Jack. Sticks out a lot to me. Um, the caretaker was actually the first year I ever went, um, and the just the backstory building um, that that they do for those characters is amazing. And then getting getting there to experience like you know this is the person who's basically terrifying you this year is really cool. Yeah, that's that sounds like it's always fun because I think the closest we've gotten to an icon over here in Hollywood would have been um, when we had the Eli Roth tear tram. Uh, and I forget I forget what that clown's name was, but it was just it was such an awesome experience that it kind of gave us hope. Like, are we gonna finally get an icon? Um, are we finally gonna get someone to run our event? Someone who's kind of like the ringleader of this whole thing? And that's what I've always loved about HHN Orlando is in the past they've had uh, caretaker, the storyteller, Jack the Clown, all those fi uh, fantastic icons, and it's just like yep. now it's any day that it can happen over here. If, yeah. if they finally open up that door, you know? Yeah, we've had some icons that have failed too, like Fear himself. Yeah. Uh, wasn't too loved. Uh, you know, Chance, although I think she was pretty good, not everybody loved as well. Um, but yeah, just the idea of an icon and just some, like an actual figure that the event revolves around is always pretty cool. I, I mean, there's been other years where it's just revolving around an idea, yeah. but having an individual is always a, a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to say, I want to touch on something that got, uh, related to Horror Nights and it got announced actually recently, or should I say leaked, uh, we got Halloween 4 and Poltergeist, uh, yes. I think coming to the event. Um, and it's funny cause I watched the league's video today and they, the way they broke it down was just so perfect that, uh, maybe they were supposed to not announce something at Midsummer Scream. Yep. And uh, something happened where Universal was like, no, we can't announce it right now, but, you know, give them something. Uh, maybe that's why we got the supposable leak of the trick-or-treat uh, scare zone for yeah. Hollywood. But, um, yeah, so they were, I guess they were supposed to probably announce those two properties, but um, something, like I said, Universal, like the leak said, Universal probably pulled the plug on that real quick, and they already had the advertising set up. At, it looked like at a hotel for Orlando. Yeah. Uh, just to inform people, like, this is what's coming in the next couple of months. You can buy your tickets for this now. And it was advertising Halloween 4, Stranger Things, and Poltergeist. Yep. And uh, from my understanding, it was a Marriott hotel. And I didn't even think about it, but the league did break it down really well. There was a couple things that they, they missed out on. Like, the fact that the, the advertisement actually says Orlando on the top. So, uh, the leak doesn't seem like it's a Hollywood leak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's because you guys are getting the, the Blumhouse uh, house. You're not probably getting Halloween. But um, I didn't think about that. And then once they broke it down and basically said there was probably the plug was pulled and somebody forgot to call like a certain hotel, yeah. which was probably Marriott. And the Marriott went ahead and released it as they were supposed to. Yeah. That makes a lot of freaking sense. Yeah. Uh, I would say out of all of them, that probably makes the most sense. Uh, yeah. It's just a simple line of miscommunication between the, the park and the hotel. Um, yeah, it's an honest mistake. Someone forgot to call. Maybe, like I said, it was it was scheduled to maybe release after Midsummer Scream. So like starting in August, they could start advertising and stuff like that. Um, I will say this though, I think we are getting Halloween four because I I want to say the water the Water World Q uh, SoCal Exploring he he did a video uh, speculating that Halloween four is coming to the event. And in the Waterworld queue, in one of the construction updates I've seen, there's a scene like much like Halloween 4 where there's like an electricity scene. They're like at this like uh, sort of like a, like a power, big power kind of station. 
and stuff okay. like that. And I guess he saw something like that being built inside the maze or what it looked to be like that. So uh, maybe we're getting Halloween 4, but the big question arises is why aren't we getting Halloween 2018 rather than Halloween 4? Since in Halloween 4, Laurie Strode is supposed to be dead and they're kind of scrapping everything after 2, you know? So it's like, is it was it a thing between Blumhouse and Universal? Uh, Universal and John Carpenter? Did they not want yeah. to make this a maze for spoiler purposes? Who knows? Yeah, I, I think it, it may be some of that, you know, the spoiler purposes and whatnot. Um, I, I thought that it would have been cool if they would have done, a, 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 what's it called, just the first Halloween house and then at the end kind of had like a little preview, like go check this out in theaters. Yeah. Part like two. Yeah. Part two. Um, but I don't know. I, I I guess I haven't gone back and actually looked at the timeline year by year mm -hmm. but another thing could be and this is just an idea and i could be completely wrong if we go back and look at the timeline is um maybe the first couple halloweens are in this in like the late 70s and halloween 4 is in the early 80s yeah that yeah and that then, probably makes a little bit more sense because in the halloween 4 uh loomis is a little bit older yeah and so so yeah following the uh, like whole 80s thing so yeah um, and that and I, that makes a lot of sense for your guys' event, especially because it looks like your guys' event this year is focusing a lot on the 80s. Yeah. Big time. Um, yeah, 100%. And that also goes, I think, with, uh, I think Poltergeist was early 90s, late 80s, I think, I believe. The first one, the original. I don't remember. Yeah. So I, I believe it's the it's the 80s. Everybody has been talking about the Poltergeist coming to the event, and even I wasn't too in the loop about that, but everybody's been talking about it coming to the event because it was an 80s themed movie apparently yeah um so you guys basically got almost all your properties or if not all your properties announced already then right no after, no not even after this leak uh how many okay so like say this leak is true which i think it is because uh hotel put it out um that's halloween 4 and poltergeist added to your guys's list how many more mazes after that do you guys need three three more that would, yeah that would be seven so that means the seven, seven. You guys are getting seven mazes total. How many mazes total? Are you guys are getting like ten? We're getting ten total. But if those two are are correct, then we would have seven. We only have five currently five. announced. So okay. this would be seven. So, out of the seven, how many are are they, so they announced all the original ones already? All the correct. Originals are all, done. No, no, no. So they they haven't said that all the originals are announced. The only thing that's completely announced is scare zones. Scare zones. Okay. Um, yeah. So what do they usually do? Do they do five IPs, five originals, or? So it's a it's a mix. Um, I, I believe predominantly we've had more IPs than originals. Okay. Uh, but this year seems to be leaning towards more originals because more originals have already been announced. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing I love about your guys' event is because you guys have such creative originals and uh, – it was yeah. an absolute honor to hear Mike Aiello talk um, at Midsummer Screen. That guy is such a cool yeah. guy, down yeah. earth guy, and um, to hear him talk. I mean, you can even hear him when he was talking on the panel, like how excited he was just to be there. And not only is he uh, the creative person over there in Orlando, but he's also a fan too. So, which makes it the experience even better for you guys because, I mean, I'm not saying Murdy's not a fan. I'm just saying like. The way Mike was expressing himself on stage, it was like, oh, my God, this guy's such a fanboy. He's just like all of us. And it's just like yeah. you get to feel that – when you feel that kind of energy from your creative director, you kind of like, damn, then that means our event might be actually really good then, you know? And it's like yeah. I just I, I, I just think he was, he was a really cool guy. I didn't get to meet him, sadly, um, but just to see him on the panel, it was cool. Uh, another thing that was cool on that panel is they actually chose one of my tweets – for the uh, event, which was awesome. Oh um, man, I missed that. Yeah, I, I put it on Twitter, but uh, okay. So, like, I guess Murdy, like a month or two before the actual event, he goes, "Tweet me your questions. I'm gonna include some of the questions into um, the panel." So I, you know, I didn't think I was gonna make it, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll tweet one. If I do make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't." Yeah. Uh, I, I ended up making it. My question was, um, how often or how hard is it to collab between both parks and how often do you guys have to meet with each other to talk about the you know IPs and stuff and they went into detail and talking about that and stuff like that so it, it was pretty cool uh one of the coolest things is right when that question went up on the board 
we were sitting on one side and literally right across was the league and they literally looked back at me and they kind of gave me the thumbs up so that was really cool so nice but um yeah so halloween 4 and poltergeist uh i want to say are for sure coming to the event it's going to probably be within the next week or two that they probably announced either one of the properties or two of them um scare la uh, another horror convention is coming around the corner in uh, about the end of August too, and uh, that uh, should be f pretty fun. Um, I guess uh, Murdy and Chris Williams over here in Hollywood are gonna have another panel. Um, no word if they're gonna announce anything yet, but uh, I want to say they are because we're we're literally in the end game now, where the month is literally a, a, a month. You know, the the event's literally a month and a half away. Yeah, so, yeah, um, um, yeah. They they don't have much time and. Since the leaks aren't official, we technically still have five houses to go, which doesn't leave much time to actually give them a backstory if necessary. Um, so I'm really hoping that they, they get the ball rolling and do it well. Yeah, and I, you know what? I think Mike really wants to announce those last five. It's just a matter on Murdy, you know, because yeah. uh, over here, I don't know. I don't know how strict they are with announcing and if it's, it has something to do with legal issues or um, and stuff like that. Um, the reason why I bring up legal issues is because last year we were supposed to get a Conjuring Universe maze. And at the mm -hmm. very last minute, they had to switch it to Titans of Terror. Yeah, the uh, WB came in and said, no, we're doing that next year. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, I already got my tickets for that. I'm very excited for that. I'm um, actually, right now, Dark Harbor and Horror Made Here are the two events I'm looking forward to the most right now. Until Horror yeah. Night starts announcing more stuff. Yeah, the the horror made here event sounds ridiculous, and I'm I'm kind of upset, but hey, it is what it is. I mean, more competition raises the bar. Yeah, um, I'm I'm really hoping that they take that uh, global the horror made here. I mean, I don't think they will, but it'd be really cool if they took it like where you guys are, maybe rent out like a lot or something, and just bring all that all the experiences over there. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. I think what makes it a little bit different from others, though, is because I was reading more up on it. It's supposed to be – in the panel from what we heard, it's going to be a private – I mean, there's not very many tickets available, so you got to buy your tickets, and whoever gets to get on gets to get in. Um, that's pretty cool, and I think it's cool that it's taking place on the lot. Um, and so it's just explaining it from what you're going to be able to do, where a lot of the things are, was just so cool. Like they, they have a – I went on the tour literally the day before, so everything they were talking about location-wise, I knew where everything was. So yeah. they're going to do a Freddy versus Jason kind of walkthrough and they have like a cool like they have a cool Crab Crystal like uh vibe set there where yeah, like a rep. yeah yeah they have like a they have the, what's called their jungle area so it's like they have like a, a a wooden cabin there that would fit perfect for a counselor's cabin um you go down the road a little bit it's all trees and stuff but then there's like a a a it's like a lake you can fill up with water so easily. That's Jason right there. There's a little greenhouse yeah. and a house right there so you can incorporate Freddy in there. So that's really cool. Um, the thing that stole the show for me, though, was uh, the, the Joker maze. I, I'm a huge Batman fan, and to be able to actually finally walk through Arkham Asylum, I'm just hella, as both a horror fan and a yeah. geek, I'm excited. Yeah, no, no. I mean, trust me, uh, I'm on the East Coast, and I'm like, damn only i could go to that event mostly this year with all the announcements that they've had but i mean it is what it is uh i'll take the l this year yeah i mean i'm pretty sure this is going to be a reoccurring event each year um it's going to get bigger and bigger as it goes um apparently they did one last year and i didn't even know about it like because they were talking about yeah we did the conjuring last year and everything i was like i remember you guys did Nebold house i don't remember the conjuring or anything so um hopefully this is going to become a, a bigger thing as it goes on um the lineup this year just sounds incredible, though. So I mean, I'm really excited for that. Uh, me and yeah. my cousin, we were sitting in the panel, and they showed one long trailer for the the all the announcements, and they were just announcing them back to back to back, like, and we were just looking at each other, like, what the hell? They're just announcing everything right there. So it was like, yeah. I was like, Horn Nights, you need to take, you need to do your homework, and this is how you do an announcement right here. So yeah, well, Horn Nights likes to tease you, <sighs> and these guys are are trying to make a name for themselves, so. They're not wasting any time. No, yeah. So, um, and that ultimately comes back to when you guys are getting Killer Clowns because that is probably my all-time favorite horror movie, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, and just seeing some of the sculpts, uh, I sent you some pictures, just seeing some of the sculpts that they're going to do for the masks and everything, I was just like, yeah. I was going, I was mind blown because I was like, 
damn, I'm so jealous, man. I was hoping <laughs> that the announcement that we got for one the one IP scare zone was gonna be Killer Clowns, and it was Trick or Treat, and I was kind of mad about that. Yeah, that was. I mean, I, I was kind of disappointed just in general, uh, but I, I guess it is what it is. We'll see. I mean, yeah. we still got to go. Um, but I don't know if you, have you watched Killer Clowns since the announcement? Oh yeah, I, immediately yeah. after the announcement. That's part of like my my rituals, my traditions. Yeah, uh, yeah. See, me and my cousin do the same, a similar thing. We, we'll wait about uh, like the month of, and then we'll just start watching everything one by one. Uh, this year, I guess yep. we're gonna have to watch the first season of Stranger Things again, which I don't mind doing. I like that show. Um, there's a couple of Trick or Treat. Uh, hopefully, the first Purge will be out in digital by then, but I don't think it will. Um, yeah. So, with, with so that's that's another thing I want to talk about. I want to shift over to Hollywood now. Um, we are getting the first Purge, and you guys are probably lucked out on that one. Yeah. Um... So we've had a, a purge scare zone for like the past God knows how long, um, which honestly is one of the better parts of the event. Not that the event doesn't have better parts that came out wrong, but just in general, the, the purge scare zone is awesome. It's so like immersive, like they actually have people driving around in like motorcycles and uh, what's it called? Moving trucks where yeah. like they open the back bed and people come in and abduct people that are in the crowd, actors that are like just walking around in the crowd. So um, the purge as a scare zone, I, I could do for another couple of years, but as a, as a maze, I'm glad that we didn't get it. <laughs> um, you, so yeah, your guys' yeah. purge scare zone looks so, so cool. I've seen videos of the truck coming out. They do a little, yeah. set, they do a little, like a little, like a little show, uh, where they execute someone and stuff like that. And that's, that's just so cool. I think that's awesome. I think if we had the room for it over in Hollywood, because Hollywood, it, it's interesting how Hollywood's park is made. So. The main park when you enter is on top of a hill, so yeah. when you go down is actually when you go to the lower lot, and uh, that's about grand level. So I don't think, especially room wise too, we don't have. It's very kind of a narrow kind of area, so we don't have room to do stuff like that, which I wish they would. But um, I, I I just I, that's one of the things I'm hoping that if I ever go to Orlando is to check out uh, if they hopefully keep it around as the purge scare zone. And I think they will because they're – I think one of the announcement uh, – major advertisements for this uh, first purge, at least in Hollywood, is they're probably going to constantly keep advertising the TV show, which is supposed to be yeah. premiering this fall. Um, and I finally got more details as to how that's going to work out as a TV show. Um, so it's going to take place – the TV show, the purge, is going to take place in one night, um, the entire series. But each character, you're going to keep seeing flashbacks. Gotcha. So um, I can see how they can incorporate that to the event if they ever wanted to. Um, I don't know about a maze, though. I, I've never just thought of the Purge as a maze, though. I've always thought of it as a scare zone. Yeah, but it's officially not coming back to Halloween Hornets this year. So, I mean, at least not Orlando as, as a scare zone. All the scare zones have been announced. So yeah. if it gets announced as a maze, um, I doubt it. But if it does, that, that that's the only way right now that it could come to Orlando. Uh, unless you guys probably get a Horrors of Blumhouse 2, which I think you guys probably will if you guys have uh, five announcements left. Um, because uh, I know over in Hollywood, one of our facades is literally the same. It looks the same as last year's Horrors of Blumhouse. Yeah. For the movie theater. So you guys might be getting that. And that, that's what also I want to talk about too. Since we are not getting Halloween 2018 as a full-on maze, you think it will be incorporated in Horrors of Blumhouse 2? For you guys, I, I think so. Um and, but that's – Halloween get, coming to to Orlando is one of the reasons, reasons why I don't think we'll get Blumhouse, the horrors of Blumhouse. Um, I feel like you guys already have a, a pretty obvious presence that it's coming from the construction. We don't. For Poltergeist, both Poltergeist and um, Hor horrors of Blumhouse, it, we, we have nothing that resembles those two at the moment. Um, so I think – they were kind of like in between. I think Horrors of Blumhouse would have been like a, a backup plan for us if we weren't able to do Halloween. But now, if Halloween is coming, which still not 100%, if it is coming, I think they may decide something else. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of my, my whole thing is like, um, back to Halloween 4, it's, it's just interesting how they chose Halloween 4 out of all of them. I mean, they've done in the past 1 through 3 um, – and, uh, you know, I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, I don't 
you know, it's Michael Myers, so either way, I'm going to I'm going to like it. But yeah. um it's just after Halloween Halloween, you know, after Halloween 3, everything just kind of went everywhere. So it's like the timelines were all – there's a 4 through 6 timeline and the H2O timeline and the 1 and 2 yeah. timeline. And then um, I finally found out why they did 3 the way they did it is because John Carpenter originally intended for Halloween to be an anthology series. So it only wasn't going to be about Michael Myers. It was going to be about like each movie was going to be a different Halloween story. Gotcha. So, yeah. but Michael Myers just blew up as a character, so they did a whole franchise with him. So, yeah, I mean, he's awesome. Yeah, Michael <laughs> Myers is, is awesome. So, uh, very much looking forward to that. You want to throw out any speculations you think might be coming to the event? Um, so, as far as like what I'm speculating from what's left, I, I have a strong feeling that we still probably have two to three originals coming out of what's left. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with some of the speculation that's out there at the moment, which is obviously Halloween and uh, Poltergeist. Um, but on top of that, I mean, the Warner Brothers uh, event is a West Coast event, so we still have the opportunity of bringing over a Jason or a, a Freddy um, property, given that they do have 80s-themed movies that came came out. It would fit yeah. perfectly. Um, I think for me, speculation wise, uh, one of the obvious ones, uh, a lot of people have been speculating, at least over here on the West coast and you guys honestly might get it on the East coast. I, I have no idea, but one of the obvious choices since we've been seeing the facade a lot lately and it's pretty much done is classic universal monsters. Yeah. Um, that's definitely due for a comeback because, uh, about a couple years ago we had a thing called the house of horrors. And that was a, a full day attraction, uh, and it was a year a year round attraction. It was basically what our Walking Dead walk through attraction is today, um, and that was a cool thing. It was a two story thing, but it was all the classic monsters, the famous icons of Universal history, and that was just cool to walk through. And that when that left, that was kind of a disappointment. So for yeah. them to actually maybe I think I think it's been a, I think it's been about five years now since that thing's left, or a couple of years about four or five years now, and it, and for it to maybe make a comeback. Maybe in a scarier version, make the monsters a little bit more scarier and stuff like that. Because one of the things Murdy has said is doing a classic monsters maze is probably one of the hardest things to do because those classic monsters are not really that scary, and you have to give it that feeling of how do we make them scarier? Yeah. So well, scary again. <laughs> yeah, scary again. I mean, they were probably scary when they first came out in the '30s and stuff. You know, I mean, that was yeah. a whole. We look at it now though, and we just look at it as legendary films, and of course. they're just iconic for uh, being what they are. We know, uh, of course, we're going to see all the strings and all the cheesiness, but that's what makes those movies for us, you know? And that's what yeah. makes them iconic, and we're not really scared of them because these are iconic characters that we just, one line, respect them. Yeah. Uh, compared to today's horror where it's all, we're going to try to scare the shit out of you, and yeah, that's what they're going yeah. for. Heart attack, basically, so. Yeah. Um, that that was a, a house that I had on my first like speculation video for this year. Uh, but we've heard less and less about it, and it really hasn't been in any further speculation. I don't know if you've seen, but there's maps out there um, with the basically the completed lineup or a speculated completed lineup, and that's not on it, at least not for Orlando. I'm, I'm going to say it is for uh, Hollywood because I don't know if you've seen a picture of the facade in the uh, courtyard area, in our courtyard area, but it's uh, what it is, it's like a, a tower of some sort, but it's got like, okay. it's all black. You've seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. The rocks, and it's got a giant, like, electrical thing for, like, Frankenstein of some sort. So, um, I, I have faith for that one. And I really think if they announce that in the next couple weeks or at Scare LA, I'm going to try to go to Scare LA. I just got denied media uh, for it. So, I'm going to just have to buy a ticket and go as a as a fan now. But um, <laughs> I'm going to try to go to the Scare LA, hopefully. Uh, my birthday is right around the corner. So, I'm just going to be like, hey, Dad, Scare LA tickets. Boom. Bam. There so, you go. Yeah, um, let's let's get to the final segment of this video because um, ultimately this video we just wanted to talk about. Um, it's rare that you get a video where you get to hear both East Coast and West Coast opinions. And yeah. uh, the fact that me and you get to collaborate on that is awesome and this to give an input of both fans' perspectives, mindsets going into each event, what they feel about the other event. Um, I always found that was interesting. Um, I like to hear people's opinions about stuff and all that. So let's get into the pros and cons list of both events. Uh, we'll start off with, of course, uh, Orlando 
since you, uh, you, uh, how long have you been going to the Orlando event for starters? Um, a really long time. So, um, I think the, the caretaker was the 13th year. Okay. So we're, we're going on the 28th year. Oh, nice. So, so you've been going for a while. Yeah. In between there, I probably missed a few of the events, but for the past, uh, four years, I've gone every single year and this will be my fifth year straight. And then before that, I probably went like another five years scattered about. Yeah. Let me turn on this AC. My, my computer's acting all, looks like it sounds like it's overheating. All right. Uh, sorry for the little, uh, noise interruption, by the way, but, uh, it's getting really hot in here. I'm in a garage. So, <laughs> um, sorry. but okay. So when we talk about, uh, pros and cons about these events, um, Obviously, West Coast thinks has opinions about uh, East Coast. East Coast has opinions about West Coast. Uh, yeah. They like some stuff. They hate some stuff. Um, jealous of some stuff. Not yeah. so jealous of some stuff. Um, I've been going to the Hollywood event since 2011. Um, that was the first year I ever went. I think it was in the, I was in eighth grade, and I had a blast. And ever since then, I've been going every year. Um, so I've been going about seven, eight years now. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's just start some pros and cons with Orlando's event. So I'm going to go for a pro on your guys' is, is that the fact that for a while you guys had icons and that over here made us jealous because um, we've always wanted an icon to take over our event and uh, seeing the advertisement for over there, uh, the icon the icon list that they've had in the past was so awesome. So yep. that's pro number one for me. Um, you want me to throw out a pro? Draw a pro because I, I can't really think of any cons for you guys this thing, really. Okay. I can think of a lot of cons for us, but I can't think of any cons for you guys. Uh, so a pro that I have for you guys is the fact that your guys' social media is handled so directly by the creative. Um, I don't know who actually handles our, our social media on our end, and it's not nearly as active as your social media is. I think Mike was saying that He's got his personal account, but I think he handles some of that Twitter account because they're making a joke about uh, the different who's whose Twitter accounts who. So HHN or uh, at Horn Nights is ours in Hollywood, and at yeah. uh, HHN or, uh, or Horn Nights or 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 O R L is Orlando's. So uh, that was a funny joke, but uh, yeah, I mean, Murdy is very uh, he's very active with the uh, the Twitterverse, and that's always cool. Um, yeah. I literally asked him a question. He follows me on Twitter, so that's what that's a fu that's a fun thing. Uh, we got lucky a while back. He used to do this thing where if you asked a question, and he answered your question, he would follow you. So that nice. was cool. And uh, I asked him a question recently because I guess he's in LA for like two weeks. And I go, "How long are you going to be in LA for?" And he's like, "I'm going to be here for two weeks." Here's another breaking news. Um, they accidentally he accidentally announced another scare zone answering a question. Oh, did he? Uh, another one? Yeah. So it's called like. Uh, I guess one of the fans asked if there's going to be any chainsaws at the event this year, and which he responded, "Yeah, there's one called like it's it's something from hell or something like that." And I guess it's another scare zone. Um, I don't think no one caught on it caught on it on it immediately, but I did, and I immediately retweeted. I was like, "New scare zone confirmed." And then after that, like so many people started blowing up his feed. <laughs> so, Interesting. Um, another accidental leak, I guess, but. Uh, I think he's just trying to get fed up with uh, holding on to the announcements. He's just like, I gotta announce these already. Like it's it's eating. Yeah. Um. So another pro for you guys is you get a lot of original uh, mazes, which I like a lot. Um. From the times I've gone over here in Hollywood, uh, since I've been going, we've only got about three original mazes. So, Interesting. At least since I've That's, gone. Yeah. See, I I. Up to I actually got got into like the YouTube uh, stuff. I I didn't understand how big of a difference there was between both of our events. Yeah. Uh, but I'll hit you with another pro for for your event. You guys actually have movie sets that the houses can be built around. Yeah. You guys have yeah. War of the World and things like that that are iconic in themselves, and then you're building an iconic event around it. Yeah. Uh, the Terror Tram, that's always fun to do because you get to walk on the the Whoville set, the iconic Psycho set, and then the iconic War of the World set, which uh, some cases the Terror Tram goes perfect with it. Uh, a perfect example was last year 
they turned the psycho set. It was Titans of Terror Tram, so they turned the psycho set with all the camp counselors from Jason were staying in the hotel for like the weekend, and Jason comes and starts killing all of them. Uh, from the transition from the psycho set to the War of the Worlds, there's like a little kind of like foresty type vibe area. So that's mm -hmm. easily like, you know, they can put tents there and have Jason walk around and stuff like that. Uh, and then you transition into the War of the Worlds set, but in between the War of the Worlds set and the Norman Bates house was uh, Sawyer Meats for Leatherface. So you have him just kind of doing that. And then you transition into a Nightmare, which is the War of the Worlds set, and it's a bunch of Freddy Kruegers just walking around. And it went perfect with the the Freddy Krueger type aspect, so I was like, yeah, that, that works out good. Uh, some Terra Trams work out with it, some, you know, it's just there for fun, so. Um, I would have to say another pro for you guys is uh, you guys got way more space over there than we do. Yeah, you guys don't have as many sound stages, do you? No, and our park is way smaller. You guys got the uh, advantage of having two parks, if ever the case. Do you guys use both parks for the event or no? They have once once so and one set. if ever the case they wanted to use both parks they have the opportunity for most space which is cool um, yeah because both parks connect yeah like they, they can connect they don't they don't connect on a regular but they have pathways where employees and actors go in between okay yeah so see that that's really cool us we're stuck with one park and we have so much space uh and being that ours is a working studio um, they can only get so many places available for the mazes. Uh, we are lucky. The last time we had a soundstage for a maze was back in uh, Alien vs. Predator. Um, and that was, I think, in 2015. And that was the last time we used a sound stage, a sound studio for a, a maze, uh, which I think is personally better because you can control environments, lighting, all that fun stuff. Uh, and this year, we're, I'm very thankful and very happy that they're going to do it for Stranger Things because... As you know, with the upside down, you need to have that right environmental and lighting situation. And working in a sound studio works out perfect. So, um, yeah. That. Other than that, though, we've had, like I said, we haven't had a sound studio maze since uh, AVP, which is back in 2015. So. Jeez. Yeah, I love the sound studios. Yeah. Or the sound studio. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna throw something out there. Something that. Um, I've always wanted to go to your event just because I want to see what it's like. But one thing that I heard that kind of I was like, I don't know, I enjoy this part of Orlando, uh, is the fact that you guys have a dry event. We have a, a dry event, yeah. Yes. Um, do you guys, you guys are alcohol friendly over there? Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I think the dry event over here in Hollywood, because we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of people who will probably take it a, a little too far maybe. Uh, and so I think they keep it dry on purpose, especially when you're in the land of the, the weird in Hollywood, as we call it, um, at least as I call it, because you see a lot of interesting people over there. Um, yeah. You're going to have to have enforced the dry event rules. One event that I was uh, pretty uh, surprised that is not a dry event is uh, Dark Harbor, Queen Mary. Now, when they were announcing everything on the panel, they were saying in between each maze, like in the middle of each maze, there's a bar. There was, like, bars everywhere in between each maze. I was like, how many bars do you guys have on this cruise ship, man? But the theming for the bars looked really cool and stuff like that. But that's the thing about uh, that Hollywood that Orlando gets to do is they, they get to, you know, have fun with the drinking and stuff like that. I don't know if they have a lemon on the drinks. And I think the reason why they don't do it out here is because they're afraid if people get too drunk, they're going to start fighting with the uh, scare actors. Um, but since you guys allow drinking over there, does that double up on security? Um, we got a good amount of security, but they they do a pretty good job of hiding in the shadows. I don't notice them too much. Um, I mean, I, I've gone with friends, and we go. The whole entire group is doing, like, shots and whatnot, and we're going around. And, like, uh, it plays into the theme as well because they have, like, these nurses that are all, like, bloody, and, like, they look like they're dying. And they're walking around with, like, um, IV stands, but it has a bunch of, like, blood pouches, and it's actually jello shots. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you get the pouch and you just squeeze it. It looks nasty because it's an IV pouch and it looks like it has blood in it, but it's a jello shot. So that's um, funny. On you're... top of that, they got it. A... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well... uh, so on top of that. Oh, no, go ahead. No, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Okay. On top of that, they have a bunch of like themed drinks for that year that they make. So like you'll be able to drink like a, uh, let's say, for example, if, they're, if they have Freddy, you'll get like a Freddy driver or something oh, nice. and like have cool drinks like that. That's awesome. Themed drinks, that's always makes the event uh, a lot better. Um, 
get you more pumped up for the stuff and everything, and I like that. Um, one of the things we do have here, it's not an alcoholic drink, but the league have said it's a very good drink, is uh, they're literally uh, jello shots. So they're like jello flavored, like uh, like different flavor of jellos, but they're in like legit like kind of needles. So like you push it down and like it comes out and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The next, I think the the recent video, you'll see it in the league's background, but on their background in one of their shelves, you see the little needles. Uh, they're like brown and they say Halloween Horror Nights on them. They're like right in the front. The next time you watch the league video or a league video, if they still have them up, uh, pay attention to the background. You'll see the little shots they provide. Those are really cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. I would say a con. I can't really think of any cons though because I mean your guys' event is really cool. Um, from what I've seen on the internet, uh, I would say the con would probably probably be uh, the lack of makeup that they get, they have available to them compared to over here. Yeah. Um, and an example being uh, when I watched the Shiny Maze last year, it looks like uh, yeah. I didn't yeah. I didn't like the way they they did Jack. They just had a top for his head, and that was yeah. Like, the bald caps were hilarious. Yeah. But I, I was able to see past that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, like I don't know, I don't really have a lot of cons. I mean, just just makeup wise. But even then, like that that was just one maze compared to everything I, else that I've seen. Like. I don't really have any really complaints for the event. Like I have a shitload for our event though that I can MP would point. I can con off, but you know. Uh I would say a con for our event is that we've never gotten an icon and a lot of people over here want icons. I know I keep bringing that up, but Yeah. Well what I'll say uh, a similar con is like the 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 era of the icon has kind of like died off too, which me as a, an original fan really enjoyed yeah. the the icons and it doesn't seem like they're going to be coming back anytime soon did they do it last year was it last year they did the the girl the the clown uh chance was 26 i believe i think or was she 27 because it's 28 this year yeah uh, yeah i think chance was 26 last year last year's icon see you put me on the spot and you make me look like a scrub, man. <laughs> no, I think I think it was uh, either last year or the year before it was Chance because I remember that was a big thing, like, oh, Jack's girlfriend's taking over this year. And I was like, oh, that's, that's an interesting take. Um, yeah. I think as far as icons go, though, because they have the four or five ones that are very popular with the Horn Nines audience, they figure if they keep bringing them back every year that they're going to get played out and people are going to get done with them. I think they'll wait a couple, like every other year or you know every three years, to bring them back. That way, people are never tired of them. And when they do come back, a lot of people get hyped up for them. Yeah, they bring them back like anniversary years. Like Jack only makes his appearances now when it's an anniversary. But I mean, you could go off of like completely just unique icons. Um, there, there was years like when the caretaker came out on the thirteenth year. Uh, I mean, his whole entire like backstory building was amazing. His commercial. That was so centric to him as a character was amazing. It actually was like uh, the city of Orlando was actually looking to ban the commercial. Oh wow! Because it was like so terrifying. That's awesome. Yeah, that's how good it was. That's awesome. That's how good it was. Um, yeah, we haven't had. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, the world's too PC now. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's really cool. I didn't even know about that. Uh, one of my favorite Orlando commercials that they did in the past was when they first. Uh, I think it was like in two thousand nine, maybe two thousand eight. When they first, it was one of the first years they did uh, Freddie Jason Leatherface, and Jack the Clown yeah. is in the is the fortune tower, and then the guy walks in. So what's my future? And then he comes out. He goes, "You don't have one." And then they, Jason Leatherface, Freddie, they all yeah. come out and they kill it. That's my all time favorite commercial from Orlando, and I just I get goosebumps every time I watch that. Sometimes I'll go back to watch past stuff and um, stuff like that. I think um, I was I was sixteen and I missed it. Sixteen, man. That that was that seemed like it was a good year. It was like they were like their sweet sixteen or something like that. I think yeah. that's how they were celebrating it. Um, so that was a pretty good year. So to end the video, all in all, though, uh, out of ten, what would you rate your event uh, from the past years you've gone? Um, I, out of out of ten events, or you're saying one out of ten in one general? One out of ten, just a, a rating system. As at as, as the past years you've gone up until last year, what would you rate it? Uh, um, that's a, that's a tough one to put me at because I want to be unbiased, but yeah. I would say 
I would say 10 just because it's become to me it's not just the event it's it's also uh, uh, now it's like a an annual thing that I do with a group of friends the past four years I've been going with, with like specific people um, but in general the events probably dropped down to like an eight but I still have a great time because it's not just where I'm going it's who I'm going with yeah um, I think it'd be about a seven out of ten and it's not because, um, you know, I mean, every year I, 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 I watch videos. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I think I only went one year where I went twice. Uh, but every other year I've only ever gone once, and that was sometimes usually good for me. Since this year I'm, I'm more active with the YouTube world and stuff like that. I think I'm going to go a couple times, meet up with the league hopefully, uh, maybe SoCal Exploring and maybe Awkward Arsic. But, um, I just want to say because uh, I, apparently – some mazes they hit or they're hit or miss, and so I, I, some mazes I like, some mazes I'm just like, eh, could have been better. But uh, 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 like I always have fun though, regardless if the maze was not all right or not. Um, regardless, me every year, my me and my cousin, we go down there and we have a, such a good time. This year, there's a lot of plans with uh, meeting up with people and stuff like that, so that w that's gonna be really fun. Um, but I have to say, overall, seven out of ten would be the right amount. Um, but I always, like I said, I always have a good time. Uh, I'm never ungrateful about uh, the events every year. I hear a lot of people on YouTube get mad about, like, uh, specifically last year event. A lot of the majority of complaints I heard was the mazes had too much black walls. And um, yeah. see, I'm not one to really complain about that though, because I mean, yeah, it, it, there was some stuff where I was like, okay, you could have easily put like a scene here or have someone pop out, but. At the same time, I get it. Like, budgets, they come and go, you know? You put all your money onto one thing, and then, you know, you can only do so much with another thing. And I, I understand where they're coming from uh, financially because I think of it as my own thing. It's like, okay, I get paid once a month, and this is my budget for the month, you know? It's like, I, I, I see where, as far as budgets go, I can I can, I can relate to that. So, um on, although I, I always have a good time, and I'm looking forward to this year, especially since I'm more involved into the YouTube world for horror. Um, I know a lot of uh, people now, and that's really that's really fun. That's always good to have connections and uh, friends to meet up there. So that's going to be pretty fun. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this year, and I cannot wait. So should be pretty yeah, man. good. Same here. This year is going to be ridiculous. I mean, just like any other year. Um, I've already got my my hotel booked. So I'm actually there opening weekend for nice. Orlando. Um, I'll be attending the media event, but I don't think I'll be able to, to film. Uh, but I'll be seeing the media event, seeing everything uh, unfold, as well as getting like a private tour the first night. And then the second night, I'm going back with my girlfriend to enjoy it as just a civilian. Are you doing a front of the line or no? Oh, hell yeah. The the feed pass, there's, there's no way. Like our... I don't know about you guys. That see that that would be one thing. Uh, just to take a step back, that's a definite con for our event. I don't know about you guys, but our lines are like two hours without speed pass. No, yeah, ours is about three. I've seen it get up to four at one point when the Exorcist came, but that's the most I've ever yeah. seen it, and that's just too insane for me. So opening weekend, every time I go over here, I always get front of the line, and then I'll get the frequent fear pass where like when I go with the like hopefully if I go with the league. Um, I don't mind waiting lines because I already went through all those mazes once and I already know what to expect. So at that point, it's just hanging out with people, you know? So um, Yeah, but those those lines like zagging become intolerable. Yeah. And it's, my, my it's back filming. I remember the, the first couple years I went, I didn't get a speed pass. And then when I finally got a speed pass, I was like, why didn't I do it this way to start with? That was when I went with my dad, too. We wanted to do a front of the line for once to try it out. And. We ended up trying it out, and we are so glad we tried it out because, uh, honestly, that was the best investment we ever did. Um, and yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And, and before that, I never got to experience all the houses. I, I would only, like, experience, like, three or four. Yeah. And not with the speed pass, I get all of them done the yeah. same night. Last year, me and, uh, me and George, we did it in... I say we went opening night. We were done by we were done with everything by midnight, and so we were just like, "Yeah, hey, let's yeah. We, let's go home. We get home early, beat traffic, and it worked out perfect for us because we got there. We even did early entry just to do it. Uh, we went in. I think we went in like two or three mazes twice, so that was cool. 
Um, but just the fact that we got some, uh, we got everything done by midnight. We went home, grabbed some, uh, we grabbed some uh, grub, and we chilled the rest of the night. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, really yeah. enjoyed that. Uh, back back on pros and cons there. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, very much looking forward to the event this year. Hopefully, one day, uh, I'm gonna throw this out here. I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to plan it for next year. That you see an actual video where me and Eddie Tamer are breathing the same air at the same yep. park. Everything, man. Because I want to make that a reality. I'm gonna try to get down there next year for sure because uh, we're planning to uh, go down there regardless. And I talked to my dad into moving into October just so I can experience Horror Nights. So. Be on the lookout, guys, because content is coming in hot between me and Eddie Tainment. Horror Night season is right around the corner. Got a lot of stuff getting announced probably in the next couple of weeks. Should be fun. But with that being said, guys, I'm Anthony from the Knights of Horror. That's who I am. That's my boy, Eddie. My name's Eddie from Eddie Tainment. And, uh, Eddie, what is your infamous catch line at the end of each video that you say that is phenomenal? And don't forget to ask yourself, have you been edutained? You heard it from him, <laughs> folks. Have you been edutained? I hope you guys enjoyed this little Q&A, uh, West Coast, East Coast uh, talk. Hopefully do more of these pretty soon, and we will see you guys on the next one. Later. <laughs>